Welcome to Milan Recording Studios. My name is James Pavel Chakras, and in today's video, I'm going to be doing a really interesting comparison between a cool keyboard and a great piano. I've recently noticed that some people, not all people, but some, are under the impression that a keyboard, such as perhaps the one I have sitting in front of me, because the piano sounds on it are modeled after certain pianos, for example, the default one on here is modeled and sampled from a Yamaha CFX. Because of that, some people out there believe that this keyboard is as good or even better than a real Yamaha CFX. And so in today's comparison video, I wanted to kind of disprove that and show that even though a keyboard like this is really wonderful and definitely has a place in the world, with today's technology, we are nowhere near replacing the sound of a great concert grand piano. Now, unfortunately, Again, this is a CFX sampled sound, and so unfortunately I don't have a Yamaha CFX at my disposal, but I do have my Steinway D from 1995, which if a real CFX, a brand new one, were here with this piano side by side, this would definitely be able to give the CFX a run for its money and vice versa. They're both very good pianos. A new CFX, if you haven't heard them before, I have done a few videos of them on my channel. The Yamaha CFX is their concert grand model, the top end piano. It has a rich, warm, beautiful sound, very crisp, very clean, but also very warm and rich. It's really, really gorgeous. And back in this time, in 1995, some Steinways definitely had that sound. I've played a few of them, and they all seemed to have this type of a warm, rich, beautiful sound. Today, that's not necessarily the case. Many Steinways that I've played that are new, not all of them, but many of them, an overwhelming majority of them, are bright and not as good sounding and have a number of other issues as well. Steinways always had consistency issues even back in this time time and even before, but I have a good one here today. And really, any good top brand piano would be able to take the place of this piano. Fazioli, Yamaha CFX, Bosner for 280VC, uh, Blutner Model 1, the C. Beckstein Concert Grand, any of those would really be able to be in this place and be one of the top brands of pianos. I believe most of the keyboard companies will have sampled a different piano for many of their reviews, or many of their keyboards, so that would be interesting to see how they all sound against this one. So let's get started here with this video. Now as I said, a keyboard like this, even though it doesn't come terribly close to truly replacing a concert grand, a keyboard like this still does have its benefits and it still does have a place in the world. So even though I'm saying that this doesn't come close to replicating a concert grand, I'm not saying that it is a bad instrument. I really like the Yamaha CP88. It's a great keyboard. The things that this has that are better than a concert grand are that, as you can see, it's very small, it's very compact, it's very lightweight. This thing weighs like 950 pounds, whereas this thing weighs like 40. Which one would you rather carry around from gig to gig? So that is a big benefit of a keyboard. And another benefit is that you don't ever have to tune a keyboard. Although on many of them, you actually can go in there and change the uh, temperament of the keys and the fine tuning. But you don't necessarily have to really tune a keyboard the way you do a piano. Now, a good piano will stay in tune for a very long time. This piano has recently been shipped all the way from California to my recording studio in Tennessee. And the day before making this video, it actually got into the studio. And as you'll hear, I actually haven't touched the piano's tuning since it left California, and it's still basically fine. I think it needs a tiny bit of tweaking in the last octave or so, but the rest of the piano sounds really great. So a good piano will stay in tune for a very long time long time, so that is one thing to know. It's also pretty easy to tune your own piano. But let's get into this review. Now, which instrument do I want to start off on playing? Let's start off on this. Let's let's give this thing the, the benefit. Let's have it go first. So what I'm going to do is play a couple of different pieces. I'm going to start off by playing my test piece that I wrote to test out keyboard instruments like these, mostly pianos, doesn't work too well on organs. And then I'm also going to play some Eric Satie and some other random stuff later on. For the Eric Satie piece, since it's kind of long and kind of repetitive, what I'm gonna do is play half of the piece on one keyboard and then switch around and play the other half of the piece on the other instrument. So I hope that you guys enjoy hearing that. Let's start off, let's start off with my test piece and see how that goes.
Now, I know what you're about to say, and you're probably even writing the comment right about now, and the comment would probably go something like this. Dude, you're an idiot because this is a Steinway, this is sampled from a CFX, so of course they're going to sound completely different. And the there is an element of that that is slightly true because this does have a radically different sound than the treble up in this piano. But the truth is that this sound sample honestly sounds very little like a new CFX. If it said CF3 over here, like an older version of Yamaha's Concert Grand, then I would agree that this sound is a little bit more accurate. If you don't believe me, definitely go check out my channel and find one of the videos I've done on a new CFX because those pianos have a rich, warm, soft, amazing tone quality that this sound sample honestly has none of, which I'm kind of surprised about because you'd think that Yamaha would really want to promote their top end piano and make it sound as good as possible in their keyboards. Must be an old uh, sample or something like that. But that is something I wanted to mention, that this sample doesn't necessarily always sound like the piano that it's replicating. Let me do a few note-by-note -note, uh, comparisons here. Let's start off with the bass here and start on this A and go all the way down to the lowest A. Note-by-note, -note, back and forth. So that is what the low bass register on these two instruments sounds like. Let me test out the treble because I was really amazed at how different the Steinway sounded than the keyboard. It's a lot more, what's the word I'm looking for? It's almost transparent sounding up here in the treble. It's a very clean, clear sound. Whereas up in here, it's also kind of clean and bright, but it's missing something rather important. And that would be the damper resonance, sometimes called string resonance. On this keyboard, it's called damper resonance. I like to call it sympathetic resonance. All three names, I believe, are accurate. Sympathetic resonance is what happens in a real acoustic piano, and I can demonstrate that now because I have a real acoustic piano here. When you hold down the pedal and you play, I'm going to play one note. If you have good speakers or good headphones, you can probably hear that there's other strings going on just besides that one note. Let me try it again. It's almost like there's reverb. It's like it's in a really big hall, and that's because all of the other strings, or at least most of them, are sympathetically resonating along with that note and giving it a little bit more sound and fullness and, in my opinion, absolute beauty. I love the sound of a piano with lots of sympathetic resonance and this one has a lot, fortunately, because I love that so much. Now this does have some programmed damper resonance and you can toggle it on and off with this button when the light is on, the damper resonance is active, and as you can see, the light is on. And you can kind of hear it there, let's play that same note. You can kind of hear it there, but I think that's one of the big differences between these two keyboards. I'm also hearing a bit more noise the sound of it is a little bit more noisy and the attack is a little bit more percussive than on this. It's a little bit more glass-like and really clear. Very, very beautiful sounding. And again, I think a lot of what I'm hearing in the difference there would be that sympathetic resonance that a piano inherently has. Virtually every top end keyboard will attempt to replicate that. Some come very close, some don't come very close. This one's right about in the middle where it does have it and it does sound pretty good. 
but I think a little bit more, or at least the ability, if they replace this button with a knob that you could dial in and toggle on and off, that would be really good to increase it just a little bit. That might bring the sound of this a little bit closer to the sound of a real piano. I don't remember the Yamaha CFX actually having a super resonant sound. All acoustic pianos will have some of it, but some do have more than others. Blutners, for example, have an extremely resonant sound. Fazioli's not so much. And the CFX, I think, is somewhere in there along with the Fazioli's. They do have some resonance, but not as much as some other brands. So that could be part of the reason why that isn't as resonant as a real piano like this. Anyway. So let's play that Eric Satie piece I mentioned. Again, let's start off here on the CP88 and play the first half of it on here and then the second half on the Steinway. I'm actually surprised how well I was able to pull that off transitioning from instrument to instrument, but hopefully you guys enjoyed hearing the differences between these two keyboards. What I'm hearing is that the sounds in here 
the sonic difference the sonic characteristics are a bit different than the Steinway but also the sounds are a bit more sterile and when I was playing this I felt that I have a couple of answers for that and one of them would be the fact that this has of course real dampers and real strings and they interact in a certain way that at least on this keyboard it's not programmed in to interact this way I don't know if this supports half pedaling it might I guess. I guess it does. But one thing that I think might be causing a lot of difference here is just the way that the sound blends on the Steinway. The way that phrases intermix and the way the sound on some strings is sustaining and on others it's not. And I think part of that is the way that the dampers are because you can really control it and you can have them gently come down and gently kind of pat the top of the strings and it'll kind of stop the strings from resonating but not all the way so they'll still be resonating from before and then you carry into the next phrase and the chords from before are still ringing in this isn't really doing that as far as i could tell so that is something that might be causing a difference in the sound qualities <laughs> see because i can play a chord and then i can gently let the uh, dampers come back onto the string, start to mute the sound, and then move on to another chord. And you can still hear the echo of the previous chord in the piano, and I think that's a lot of the reason why this is sounding a lot different. So that is something interesting. Another thing I wanted to talk about would be the action. And many people, as well as myself, consider that a piano action, as a general rule, is going to be lighter than on a keyboard action. And a lot of the times, oh, excuse me, a lot of the times the keyboard actions are lighter than on piano actions. On this case, though, it's the other way around, like I first said by mistake. The action on this is actually one of the heaviest actions that I've found in the keyboard industry, the digital keyboard world. And so as a result, this action is a bit lighter, but not only that, it's a little bit smoother. And I'm very used to the way a real piano feels, so I'm very a bit more comfortable on it, and I feel like phrases flow just a little bit more smoothly and the sound comes out a little bit more naturally on a real piano than on a keyboard. Some manufacturers are coming out with very, very good actions in their keyboards. This one here I think is a little bit too heavy and I think it could be tweaked a little bit. As it stands right now, it's pretty good for things like jazz, blues, and rock, and things that don't need quite as much control in the dynamics and the expression as classical music. This keyboard's big weakness, I feel, is classical music, at least certain pieces like that Eric Satie. Let me just demo a couple of chord progressions from pop music and see how those sound on both these pianos. We all know this one. Let's see how it sounds on this one. I was really expecting the tone to be the huge difference between these two instruments but what I'm really feeling and I've never actually been able to compare side by side my Steinway to any other piano keyboard really anything so it's really interesting for me as well as hopefully for you guys so what I'm hearing is not just that the tone is a bit different between these two keyboards this one's a bit brighter and a little bit noisier this one here does have a bit of brightness to it but it's a bit thinner and cleaner sounding and very precise but what I think is the really huge difference is the just the resonance and the the the, the presence that the cabinet of the piano has the strings the dampers the soundboard it's so far hasn't been able to be replicated in a real piano and I think that is the biggest difference between these two the sustain when you hold the pedal down and play some chords a real piano especially a good one like this it swells and the sound expands and fills whatever space you're playing unless it's like outside then it's not gonna happen but this has just a certain swell and sustain to it that a keyboard can't quite generate <laughs> 
you play it and of course it sounds like a piano but you play it on here and at least to me it sounds like it's soaring it sounds a lot more grand and open and really really beautiful let's try one more chord progression you might recognize it you might not it wasn't originally played on a piano but it works really well on the piano You know what song that was from let me know down in the comments below and also don't be afraid to let me know what you think of the differences between these two pianos i've given you my feedback now you give me your feedback on what you think the real differences are between these two instruments let's hear how that sounded on the steinway and i think that'll give a really good context for the differences in the bass again let's see how it sounds over here wasn't using as much pedal in that as I did on the other chord progression, so I wasn't really able to demonstrate that whole soaring thing I was talking about before, but you can hear that there is a bit of a difference. In this register right here, I was actually surprised at how similar they actually sounded. Although there is a difference, the bass on this is absolutely glorious as many almost all Steinways have a pretty glorious bass, even the ones that have some other issues. That low A really rumbles and it feels amazing. Let's try it on here. Like, it sounds like a recording of a piano and it sounds like a recording of a pretty good piano. You can tell that it is trying to be a concert grand, but a real piano just has a certain presence that carries through in real life and will carry through to a recording that's a bit different than playing a sampled recording of a piano. I didn't know I could reach an octave with my second and my pinky fingers, but I can. Really rich and growly, whereas this here is a little bit less so. And I think that that's about everything that I wanted to demonstrate, although I think I did say that I would play a bit of Debussy, so let's do that before I go. Hope you guys enjoy. Let's play the little ending bit of Claire de Lune. One of the most, the whole piece is beautiful, but it's one of my personal favorite sections of the whole song. I think you could play that song on almost any piano, except for one where it didn't have any keys and it would sound really beautiful. Let's try it on this one. Really, really beautiful. You could hear that swelling that I was talking about in the sound and you play a run. The sounds just kind of mixed together. Hear all that kind of 
that dissonance that's in there as well. A little bit of it, there was more last time I played it because I didn't put the pedal down all the way, but. Really, really interesting. On here, does that do that? Yeah, but sounds a lot more real on the real piano, as you might expect. One thing I'm noticing on the CP88 is that this note seems really bright and really easy to bring out, and there's a couple others up here that seem really too easy to bring out. Whereas up here, it's a little bit more balanced, I think. See? If you want to bring that note out, you can, but on the CP88, it's a little bit too, too, way too intense, actually. Which could be e easily tweaked, I would have to imagine, in the software, just bring the intensity of that one note down and a couple of the other ones up there. So that's another thing I'm noticing, is that the treble on this seems to be really artificially bright. And the treble on this... The last octave almost seems brighter than on here. Maybe not. No, it doesn't. That, the C8 on here... Very... It's almost like, again, like glass. I guess that's the term I just used to describe my piano, the glassy. Never knew that. This one here is more woody, which is kind of interesting. And the treble on here, a lot of times people often comment on my videos that they complain that the digital pianos don't have as much sustain as real pianos, which I would understand. So we demonstrate that here. I don't know, that sounds pretty realistic to me as far as the length of the sustain goes. Let's try it out on here. Both of them seem to be about the same. That note does need a bit of tuning, however, I will admit that. So, I do need to take a little bit of a look at that and work on the last couple of octaves of the piano, like I did say. That is one advantage of a keyboard where you don't ever have to tune it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this comparison between a Yamaha CP88, the CFX sound, the onboard sampled sound, and a real 1995 Steinway D. While this video was overall more favorable to the real piano, as you might expect, a keyboard like this does have its place, and as I said, I do enjoy the CP88 very much. It's small, it's light, it's compact, it sounds good, and also there are a number of other sounds on here as well. Roads, organs, synth stuff, lots of cool things. So that is another advantage of a keyboard that it has multiple sounds. So again, while this video was more favorable to the real piano, a keyboard like this does have its place, especially considering that this is far more affordable than any concert grand that ever was made, because this is around 2,500 and this is around 180. So I hope you guys enjoyed this comparison. If you did, make sure to go check out my channel because I have a number of cool comparison videos of keyboards, including the CP88 and many of your favorite top brands. I'm not able to feature all of the top brands of keyboards because while I have a number of friends in the music industry, I'm not friends with them all, and many of them who are my friends aren't able to pull the right strings to be able to get instruments loaned to me. Some of them are but not all of them are. So that's why a few of your favorite brands might not have been featured in these videos. Everyone wants me to review Casio, and unfortunately I don't have any contacts at Casio, but I would like to see how their more affordable keyboards stack up against the more premium ones like these. So if you know anyone who happens to be a dealer with really any keyboard company, or if you are a dealer with a keyboard company and you're interested in perhaps helping out my channel, I will put some contact info in the description of this video, and if it's not there, remind me, and then I will put it in, because I do read every comment that goes up on my videos. 
if you're interested in doing that or you know someone who might be, make sure to contact me because I would love to do videos like this. I really hope that you guys are enjoying them. If you are, make sure to go ahead and give this video a like. You might want to go check out my channel. Like I said, I've got lots of cool comparison videos between keyboards as well as acoustic pianos where I compare acoustic pianos to each other. And I'm also going to be comparing digital pianos to my personal acoustic piano. So if you guys like that, you might want to think about subscribing. And if you do subscribe, go check out some of my other videos, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.